Hi, and welcome to question 10 of the 2022 Paper 1 Liebenstauer Ordinary Level Maths. So as always, if you want a copy of the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. So we'll get stuck in here. Um, question 10, starting off um, with what looks like um, a differentiation question. So it says here, Keith plays hurling. It says, during a match, Keith hits the ball with his hurl. The height of the ball could be modelled by the following quadratic function. So even though this is not y and x, it's h and t. h is the height of the ball in metres, and then t is the time. I know this is quadratic because it has two variables, and the biggest power is a 2. So this should have a shape either like this or like this. <clears throat> now, given that the situation with a ball and it's a negative, it's probably going to look something like this. Okay. Now, part one here says, how high in meters was the ball when it was hit? So to give you a hint here, and they don't always do this, but by, de by definition, when the ball was hit, that, that was time zero. So this is an equation of two unknowns. Okay, so I'm going to write it out. Now, that's supposed to be H. Apologies for my bad writing. Um, I'm going to leave the T with an empty brackets to kind of simulate uh, what the input is going to be. And they could do this question with function notation, but they're not in this case. So everywhere t is, okay, in the equation, we're going to put in zero. Now what happens in this case, I don't even need the calculator. Okay, so that's h is equal to minus 2 times 0 squared is going to be zero. So it's going to go away. 5 times 0 is going to go away, and you're left with the 1.2. And that's meters. Now just a small thing, this number at the end in a quadratic is the y-intercept. So that's, I suppose, the starting point of the situation we're talking about. Now, part two says the ball was caught after 2.4 seconds. How high in meters was the ball when it was caught? So how high is the height? So let me rewrite the equation again. Okay, um, let's make sure I do it right. So again, it's an equation of two unknowns, but we're given the time. Okay, so all we have to do here is substitute in everywhere we see t with 2.4. So in effect, it's the exact same thing as part one. Now, unfortunately, this is going to be a bit more complicated in the sense that we're going to have to do an actual calculation, but that's why we have the calculator. And just to do it here, it's always worth making sure that we're able to... Um, use the calculator. So I'm up in there, negative 2 times 2.4, close bracket squared, plus 5 times 2.4, plus the 1.2. Now, even before I click it, I want to make sure that it's written correctly, um, or I kind of have a ballpark figure. Like, think about how high would you hit a hurl, um, and it's traveling for 2.4 seconds. So I shouldn't expect a negative answer, for, for sure, okay? You can't have a negative height. So I press equal, and I'm getting that's a fraction. I'll change that to a decimal, and it's 1.68 meters, which is actually suspiciously low, to my mind. So 1.68 meters. Now, it's always important <clears throat> with a question like this, and I don't probably need this step here, but this second step is super important. Let's say I'd substitute that in incorrectly in the calculator, and my answer was actually wrong. The fact that this is, is written as what you should do would get you a chunk of marks. Okay? Now, you'd be penalized if it's wrong, but you wouldn't be penalized. If you had gone wrong answer and not shown this intermediate step, you'd get zero. Okay, let's double-check the answer on the next page. Okay, so that's cool. We actually did it right. Um, now, I put in an actual graph of what that quadratic would look like, okay? So you see there are crosses at the 1.2, that's the y-intercept. And like you would expect with anything, it goes up. And here is the maximum point it reaches, the highest point, and then drops down, okay? So the quadratic is super important, and what I often have struggled myself is to kind of give reasons for why are quadratics important. And one thing is gravity, Okay. The effect of gravity on an object on the Earth is something we are intrinsically aware of. We, we've learned this 
if you pick something up and let go, it falls, drops back to the ground. Okay. So being able to describe that mathematically is super important. Okay. Now that's part two. So then part three says, uh, now noticing here, this is a chunk of marks. When the ball passed over the halfway line, it was at a height of 3.2 meters and its height was decreasing. Okay. How many seconds after it was hit did the ball pass over the halfway line? And the reminding is again of, of our function. So again, the function here is giving the height as a function of time. Okay. So in this case, we know what the height is. They've just told us here. So I'm not going to bother rewriting it because it's right there in front of me. But if I was to over here go, well, h k is equal to 3.2 and time is what I'm looking for. Now, in a sense, you probably don't need to write out the information you have and don't have, but it kind of will help you focus the mind, especially if you're not sure what's happening. And maybe you'll make the leap. You go like, oh, I have this. That's 3.2. Okay. Now, on the far side, I don't know what T is, so that's my unknown. And even though T occurs twice, it's the same unknown. Now, if you're stuck here, that's fair enough, but this is a quadratic I always kind of say, if you if you see a quadratic and you're not sure what to do, solve it. Nine times out of ten, or, or maybe even a higher probability, um, it's going to be the right thing to do. So when we solve a quadratic, we usually have a zero on the on one side, in this case, the left side. So I want to make sure that I have a zero there. So I'm going to take away 3.2 okay, to remove it. If I do it one side, I'm going to have to do it to both sides. So 3.2, take away 3.2 is zero is equal to everything else here will stay the same. There's nothing, there's no other uh, powers of two. There's only one variable on its own. Now 1.2 take away 3.2 should be negative two. Make sure I'm right, okay. Now I could use the minus B formula to factorize this and, and that's given in the maths tables, okay. If you're not sure how to use that formula, I'd suggest trying it to make sure you get the same answer. But with this methodology, we could use factorization, okay? And with factorization, because I have a two in front here, it makes it a bit more awkward. But I should end up with two t and two t in my answer. Now, to do this, this was the way I learned it, and there's different ways of doing this. I'm gonna multiply the number in the front here by the number at the end. Actually, I've just realized I probably should, before I solve this, multiply across by a negative one up here. Okay, if I do that, all the signs are going to change. So minus 1 by 0 is still 0. Minus 1 by minus 2 is going to be plus. And minus 1 by plus 5 is going to actually change that to a minus. So I might just fix that digitally. Okay, um, it's going to be a minus. And then the minus 1 by minus 2 is going to be plus 2. So this should be a positive um, for the methodology I'm using. Now the way you do it is you take the number in front, multiply the number at the end, and you get a plus four. Now I want to look at what numbers will multiply to give plus four, but also add to give minus five. Okay. Now minus four times minus one will multiply to give plus four. Minus four plus minus one will add to give uh, minus five. Okay. So my numbers are minus four minus one. Now usually when you have these doubled up, um, you just have them. So we end up with t minus four times two t minus one. Now, if I'm right, okay, these two things should multiply to give my original. Okay, so let's test it. I'm gonna do this a fast way, but t by two t is two t squared. t by minus one is minus t. Minus four by two t is minus eight t and minus four by minus one is plus four. I've done something wrong. And I've just realized when I have this, I didn't have it properly. Okay, I didn't have both things. That should have been actually a minus two. So this is gonna be wrong here. So let's fix that, so it's minus two. So t by two t is two t squared. t by minus one is minus t. Minus two by two t is minus four t. Minus two by minus one is minus plus two. Okay, so combine the the t's together, the like terms. I end up with minus five t 
plus two. So it did work out. Now I've run out of space, so I'm just gonna try to fix that here by getting rid of this. Okay, just to leave myself space. Now in essence, we have um, two answers here, and that would be something we'd normally expect from a quadratic. And I can create two separate equations here, minus two t is equal to zero, or, okay, two t minus one is equal to zero. Now if I solve these, I could add two to both sides here, I'd be left with t is equal to two, or, now if I uh, try to solve this, I'm gonna end up with, uh, bring the one across, 2t is equal to plus 1. Now I want to get rid of the 2 there, so divide both sides by 2, and I end up with t is equal to a half. Now, the height was decreasing, so it'd be the lower height, okay? So if the height was decreasing, it shouldn't be the, the first height, okay? Okay, so um, if you think about it in a way like this, it's the ball is going up and then coming back down again. Okay, so when t is equal to half, it'll be here, it'll be going up. Okay, so t is equal to two would be where the height is decreasing. And that's the answer we, sh we should declare. So a big chunk of marks, again, you could use the minus v formula, um, because this is kind of hard to factorize. If you're not sure on factorization, just use the minus b. It'll take a little bit longer. And with the minus b formula, or the quadratic formula, the a value, okay, is the negative two, the b value is the plus five, and the c value is the 1.2 and you just substitute them in, and you'll be able to work through the answer. Now, let's see now. Um, that's just the answer to now the notes, so it's the same thing. And as you've shown there, this is the actual graph of that particular function, okay? And at t is equal to, or h is equal to 3.2, it crosses here and here. The height is increasing here, the height is decreasing. So we chose the right value with t is equal to 2. Now, part four says find dh dt, and that's just an indication that we should differentiate. Now, I'm going to write out our function again just on top here. So, h is equal to minus 2t squared. I better double check it. Uh, plus 5t plus 1.2. Plus 5t plus 1.2. So dh dt is the differential or the derivative of this equation. So I'm going to write dh dt. Now to differentiate, we follow a kind of, a, using the power rule anyway, we follow a two-step rule. Step one says we multiply the power by the number in front. So two times negative two is negative four. And then we take one away from the power, two take away one is one. Now our second term, if we're differentiating five t, Effectively, we use the same rule, and there's a power of 1 there. There's always a power of 1, we just don't bother writing it. So 1 by 5 is 5, and then take 1 away from the little number 1, take away 1 is 0. Now, t to the power of 0 is the same thing as 1. Now, there's a, there's a multiplication here. I'm using a dot, but I should maybe use the operator. 5 times 1 is equal to 5. What we often enough is that any term or any variable with a power of 1, the, the variable just drops away, so you're left with the plus 5. Okay, so this is a quicker way. It's, it's going to always be that. This is why, but it's going to be easier. Now, the last point there, 1.2, is basically saying what's the slope where, uh, where it's 1.2 all the way across. And if you think about our, our curve looks like this, what's the slope along this line here? Now, I'm, ba I'm drawing it badly. Okay, it should be horizontal. It's got a slope of zero, so that number is going to turn into zero. So this is our derivative, okay? And this tells me the rate of change of the height of the, the, of the slitter relative to time at any point on the graph. That's what slope is, okay? Um, now it says, hence find how long it took the ball to reach its greatest height. So if you remember, our quadratic looks something like this. We're looking for its greatest height here. Now the slope is increasing here, okay? It's decreasing here. At the highest point, the slope, okay, is equal to zero or the change in height relative to change in time isn't changing it at the maximum. For like a split second, it's just hanging there and then it starts to drop back down. So once we make this realization, well, this and this are the same thing. So wouldn't this and this be the same thing? And once you make that realization, you can swap them out. And now instead of having an equation of two unknowns, okay, I have an equation of one unknown. 
So 0 is equal to minus 4t plus 5. Okay, now I can solve this. Maybe I want to make this positive. Okay, um, I might do that by bringing it across the equal, or if I want to remove that, I can do the opposite to it. So I can add 4t. If I do it one side, I have to do it to both. So we end up with 4t, uh, minus 4t plus 4t cancel. That's why we did that. Okay, is equal to 5. Now, if I want to get rid of the 4, I'm going to divide that by itself. It's 4 times t, so the opposite of multiplication is division. Do it to one side, I have to do it to both. I'm going to end up with t is equal to 5 over 4, which is 1.25. Okay, and that should be seconds. Now, that's it, I think. That's the answer. 1.25 seconds. Okay, let's check the answer of the thing. Yeah, okay, so effectively, we were looking for, again, okay, this is a graph of the actual function they're talking about. What was the, um, I suppose, the x value, would be what we could say, or the time, because t is the same thing as x in this scenario, at 1.25 seconds, it reached the maximum height of 4.35. Actually, I haven't done that, have I? What's the time I'm looking for? Okay, so I, now they don't actually ask for that. Its greatest height would be 4.3. That's what that's saying. We don't need that in this question. We're only looking for the time value. So the graph I did here matches my answer, so I'm fairly sure I'm right. Now then we're on to 10 part B. A lot of words here. So later in the game, Keith hit the ball again. This time the height of the ball, uh, T seconds after it was hit, could be modeled by a different quadratic okay, function. Y is equal to K of T, okay, where K is in meters. This time, the ball was one meter high when Keith hit it. Its greatest height was five meters, uh, which it reached after two seconds. It hit the ground without being caught. So use the information above. Write down the coordinates of the three points that must be on the graph. Y is equal to K of T. And draw the um, graph of Y is equal to K of T on the axis below from when the ball is hit until it hits the ground. God, words. So look, let's see if we can figure it out from the middle bit here. Um, its greatest height was five meters. So remember, five meters is the H value. In, in essence, it's the Y value. Okay, so these things are going to be T and H. That's the coordinates, okay? Now in this case, they're using, instead of H, they're using, I think, K of T, but whatever, it's the same basic principle. So I know here that when it, after two seconds, and that's the time, it was at five meters. So right there, I have the attempt, okay? Um, now I'm trying to look at the other information I'm given. In the first statement they have here, this time the ball was one meter high when Keith hit it. Now that's T zero, okay? So, so the first point there, it was one meter high when Keith hit it. Well, the time was zero, okay, when it was hit, and it was one meter high, that's where the, the slitter was when it was hit. So that's zero on the x, one the y is there, two on the x, five and the y is here. Now quadratics are symmetrical, okay, so if it goes up, it's coming back down. So it'll be, again, symmetrical, so two units away from that, so zero to two is two units, two to four is two units it should be at the same height. It hasn't been acted on by another force. So it should look something like that. And it says to draw the graph, does it? And actually, yeah, draw the graph now. Apologies, my drawing is absolutely terrible on this tablet thing. That should be close enough. It's within tolerance. It's not an art competition. And I haven't actually written the answer down here, which is a bad thing. Okay, and that's the point four one. So if you get to the first two points and draw what you can, you know, you'll be up here at probably the eight marks, which is pretty good. If that last bit, you know, you didn't cop that symmetrical, fair enough, okay. Now, obviously, we should hope we do, but that's, I suppose, fairly high level in, in a sense. That's the answer there. I didn't actually draw the graph, I don't think. Okay, and the notes, I must go back and fix that. Um, now, question 10, part C, part one, Keat buys a new hurl, it usually costs 33 euro. So I'm going to write that statement out. This mightn't be needed, but one hurl, okay, 
is equal to 33 euro. Okay. Now, Keith gets a student discount of 15%. Work out the price uh, Keith pays for the hurl. So there's a few ways of doing this, but if you think about it, if he gets a discount of 15%, he's paying 85% of the original cost. So I could just go 33 times 85% and work out that answer. Now let's do it, okay? So that's my calculator there. So it's 33 times 0.85. Right, 85% is 85 over 100. So I get 28.05. Now, some people might do it like this, multiply by uh, 85 over 100. Again, that's what a percent is. Okay, you should get the same thing. I do. Or some people might choose to go 33 using the calculator function, uh, 85%. Like that should give us the same thing, and it does. So that's 28.05 euro. Now, does that pass the, the smell test? Yeah. Look, 15% is not a huge amount, but it's like less than a quarter of it. That seems to make sense, okay? Now, what others might have done is they might have gotten 33 times 15%, okay? And they would have gotten 3, 4, 95, okay? I think it's 4, 95. I should check it. And then gone 33 take away 4, 95 should give me the 28, oh, 5. Perfectly fine. There's just, just different ways of doing it. Part two then says Keith also, let me just check the answer actually. Yep. So Keith also buys a jersey. This costs 49.50, including VAT at 23%. Work out the VAT on this jersey. Give your answer correct to the nearest cent. Now, I always find these tricky personally. I was going to say X is equal to cost. Okay, just to make this make sense. And I go, so the statement there is saying that the the cost plus VAT is equal to um, 49.50. Now, the VAT, you could call that the cost plus, the VAT is worked out by getting the cost by 23%. Okay, is equal to 49.50. Now, I said I'd use X instead. So it's X plus X times 23% is equal to 49.5. Now, 23% is the same thing as 0 0.23. It's 23 over 100. Okay, 0 0.23 is equal to 49.5. Now, if you go left to right here, you should do the multiplication first. So that's x plus 0.23x is equal to 49.5. If you see there, this are the same two variables. That's the same thing as 1x plus 0.23x is 1.23x is equal to 49.5. And I've run out of space. So let's finish it off over here. 1.23x is equal to 49.5. Now, if I want to get rid of the, the number in front of the x here, because I want x is equal to, well, I can do that by dividing by 1.23. Now, 1.23 do one side, I have to do two both sides. Now, I did this so that they would cancel, you're left with one. Anything divided by itself is one. And the far side there, that's a calculation of the answer on the next page. So should have came up with 40.243. It says to the nearest cent, so uh, 40 euro 0.24 cents. And that's what I've declared. Does that make sense? Okay, like the price should be lower. Like if you take the VAT off, it should be lower than that price. My answer is lower, so I'm fairly happy. I'm fairly sure I'm right. And you see, okay, that's the end of question 10. So apologies for the bad writing. Um, as always, if you want to copy the notes I'm working off, just send me an email at shanetroy at gmail.com. And please like and subscribe to get access to more playlists. Thanks.